Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. In Hawaii, we say words like stoked. And I am stoked because I have someone on my show who I have known since I was 19 years old when I met her at the Pecos Charismatic Benedictine Monastery, of course, in Pecos, New Mexico. She had such a profound effect on my life. Uh, her and uh, Brother Michael, who's now Father Michael, and Sister Mary Jo and Father Michael and several others uh, were sent by the Pecos Monastery <clears throat> to start a monastery on the north shore of Oahu. And so they've been putting up with me uh, for a while up there, and they finally uh, did something really horrendous. And we're going to ask Sister Mary Jo what they did, what the bad decision is that they made. Uh, so Sister Mary Jo, welcome to our show, the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Yep. Thank you. What was the big I mistake you made when you let it, let me become an oblate? What was that all about? Uh, I don't know that that is a mistake. I think uh, God wanted it, and so there it happened. And uh, the door opened, and you walked through. I, I had been the longest novitiate in the history of maybe mankind. It took me eight years to finally uh, be able to go from novitiate to oblate. And it was so beautiful. June 3rd, I think it was. When we had, uh, when I got to make my uh, my profession, so so thankful for you. So, Sister Mary Jo, can you tell us? We're, we're going to dig a little bit more into who you are first, and then your mission, and then your message. But tell us how in the world did you uh, become Sister Mary Jo, and and your history with the Pecos Monastery and the and the founding of the Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery in Hawaii. Wow, that's a big order. Um, I <laughs> suppose a lot of it goes back to the fact that when I was uh, being carried in my mother's womb, she made a retreat uh, at Leavenworth, and that ended up where I was going to join and be a Sister of Charity of Leavenworth, Kansas. Um, but I think um, just being fascinated by sisters at the age of three, four, and five, I was first communion at the age of six and confirmed at seven. Confirmation changed my life at seven years old. And I loved Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. And every night after school, that's where I went first before I went home. And so um, the vocation, the relationship with Jesus kind of just grew the faith uh, in our Catholic faith, so on. And then when I got to high school, I um, felt still called to be a sister. But I went out for cheerleading and uh, happened to be elected four years um, Junior um, and varsity, and then the varsity. That makes total sense, Sister Mary Jo, because you are the Lord's cheerleader, absolutely. That makes perfect well, I never sense. Retired. After I graduated from high school, I never retired from cheerleading because I'm still, as you say, cheerleading for the Lord and for our faith and for um, our relationship with God, Father, Son, and Spirit. So I wanted to enter at, at the end of high school, age of 16, and my mother said, no, wait a year. So I waited a year and asked her, I went to college, and I said, I'm ready to go now. She wanted to know where. I says, to the convent. And she said, well, um, I think uh, I thought should have said a year. I should have said four years, and <laughs> she only said a year. So my father and she allowed me to go, and at 17, I entered the community, and I've been there ever since uh, in, as a sister. Transferred to the Benedictine community after meeting Abbot David and a retreat in um, Oceanside, I think, and um, we just started thinking about going to Pecos and um, making retreats there. And finally, he asked me if I could just stay and come and take uh, over the registration office for a year or so. Got permission for my community to do that. And I went to Pecos in 1972. And so, um, and 11 and a half years after that, uh, the door opened for Hawaii with the bishop inviting uh, Abbot David to send a group over. And so a group of us came over, five of us came over. So 1973 was when you went to Pecos, and I think I showed up there about 1974, maybe. And pe Describe what was happening at Pecos during that time. Um, I know for myself, I went to one of the young adult retreats. It was very exciting because of the charismatic renewal. I had already come into the charismatic experience in Los Angeles, San Diego, um, Santa Monica, and so we just wanted more. And so we went to Pecos and we heard that Pecos was a charismatic Benedictine um, monastery. And sure enough, it certainly was. The registrations were on a waiting list. People wanted to get there from all over the United States and some from 
um, Asia and also from Europe. So we were busy for 11 and a half, 12 years for sure. And the monastery had... And I was, go ahead. I was in the registration office, so I had the opportunity to, to sneak people in even when, though it was full. <laughs> well, I, I remember... Um, so the monastery, when, when I came up there, I remember I was going through a personal thing in my own life. Because I love Jesus so much, I had experienced this, this incredible infusion of God's Spirit through the monastery, and, or through the, through the charismatic renewal. But the people that, who started the prayer meeting in Waco, Texas, where I, was, where I was living with my parents, I was going to college at Baylor, um, they had been exposed to this at the Pecos Monastery. So they brought the renewal to Waco, Texas. We began a group called the New Heart Community, and uh, eventually uh, uh, I, I, you know, so the DNA of the Pecos Monastery and the Benedictines, part of my, it's my spiritual DNA. I just love you guys. And I remember going up there, and I had gone through an extended time of fasting. I, uh, I think seven days of fasting. I know you guys fast twice a week. It's crazy. Don't ever go up to that monastery when they're on a day of fasting, or you only get peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> but, but anyway, I, I showed up there, and I was, so many people were telling me, you know, you love the Lord. You're 19. You're probably supposed to be a priest. And I had a real challenge in my life, surrendering my life to the Lord, because I remember when I was in social studies as a junior in high school, my heart opening up to the possibility of someday being a father. It blew my mind. And so I really wanted to be a father, but everyone around me was saying I needed to be a priest. So I, went, I had fasted and went up to the monastery seeking God's will. And I remember uh, Michael, who was a Franciscan. I guess he's recently passed away. But uh, he was my roommate. Uh, and he had a, I think he was a third order Franciscan or became one. And he knelt by his bed. I hadn't even met him. I was trying to sleep. And I was just in turmoil. I could not surrender my life to the Lord anymore because I didn't want to do what he wanted, what everyone seemed to think he wanted me to do. And then he just knelt by the bed and said, Lord, I love you and I give you my life. Lord, I love you and I give you my life for about an hour. And I just finally said, Lord, as hard as, hard it is, as it is to, uh, to, uh, to do your will, it's harder not to. So whatever you want, you know. And it was then that I met uh, the mother of my four children the very next day. So the monastery... Is, is my center of gravity. It just, it just is, and you especially, the the the, the spontaneity and the and the love and the, the you know the vivaciousness of Sister Mary Jo, uh, just was infectious for all of us. So those were, and that monastery was a very small monastery until the charismatic renewal kind of came there, and then it just got too big. It couldn't hold all the people, right? That's true. Yes. In fact, yeah. they were thinking about closing it. Uh, and then Abbot David and um, Brother Michael, Brother Mark, and um, Father Jim Scully came to um, with the Charismatic Renewal from Bennett Lake, Wisconsin, and it just began to thrive all over New Mexico and Texas and um, Colorado. It just it just began to spread like wildfire. You had thousands of people making retreat every year, and there was just not enough capacity, so they said, "Let's kick Sister Mary Jo out." <laughs> and so how is it? it yeah, oh, poor <laughs> Sister Mary Jo, suffering for Jesus in Hawaii. Well, and I didn't want to go to Hawaii. I absolutely did not because it was a tourist state and it was all, you know, it, but the way it was depicted. But I said, Lord, I'll go anywhere if you're there. And oh, so he assured oh, yeah. me he would be there. Well, so you know, I the, went. the Pecos Benedictine Monastery, the setting is so beautiful. It's up Holy Ghost Canyon, I believe is the name of the road, or the canyon yeah the setting is so picturesque with the mountain stream flowing especially in the springtime and the winter time it's so i can understand you're you're going from there to hawaii but i feel so bad for you because you're setting in hawaii now on the north shore of oahu up in the mountains you can see why it may have breaking when it's big beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. setting. Yes, anybody yes. anybody who wants to make a retreat should consider a private retreat or anything like that the monastery is so beautiful it's so true. So it is beautiful. We are in awe that Our Lady, praying to Our Lady to help us find property because we were just in a residential neighborhood at first. And she opened up this door for us and it has blossomed. And um, so many people are told, whatever they contact or whoever, go to the monastery. Just go to the monastery. It's like you'll get help there. And the truth is, yes, there is help there. But it's not because we're there. It's because the Lord is there, and he knows how to help them. We don't. We well, just are um, ministering. Well, you know, I, I know this is probably not right to say, but I know my, my dad stays in a, in a Benedictine-assisted living 
place in uh, in Monticello, Minnesota. I was just there, shared a cigar with my dad. I think the first cigar we'd ever had together. But uh, the the Benedictine Benedictines are known for graciousness and hospitality. And when you go to the Benedictine Monastery, Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery in the North Shore of Oahu, you will be loved, you will be blessed, and you will be changed. We're talking with Sister Mary Jo, and uh, I think I, I always forget how to pronounce her last time. I think it's McKenna, isn't it? Or am I saying it wrong? McEnany. <laughs> Oh, McEnany. McEnany, yes. McEnany. Sister Mary Jo okay. McEnany, uh, uh, been a part of my life since I was 19. I'm not going to tell you how old I am, but has meant so much to me, uh, just as, like a waypoint in my life, and along with Father Michael and then all the other Benedictines up there. But I've got to know her and Father Michael back in 1974. So that tells you how old I am. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with more with Sister Mary Jo. We're going to see if we can light you guys, set a fire underneath you guys. <laughs> Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My name is Bear Wozniak. And I want to challenge the men uh, that are out there to please go to deepadventure.com and join Bear's Man Cave. Bears Man Cave is a really cool group. It's a private Facebook group where men come to challenge each other, equip each other, mobilize each other. Uh, we've seen a lot of conversions through membership in that private Facebook group. And also, every now and then, like every two to three weeks, I have a live video chat where 20, 30 men show up. You know, we can all see each other on screen, and we talk with each other. I interview one of them, and we go through my, my latest book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and we just, it's, we're really there to just look at each other and go, you love Jesus and you're a man. Is that okay to be a man and love Jesus? Yeah. And so we, wanna, we want to uh, encourage you women to go in and sponsor Bear's Man Cave for one of the men in your lives. Uh, and you, uh, men, go in and uh, do the same for your brother-in-law. Or there's so many priests who would love to be members too, uh, but you have to sponsor them. It's only $10 a month. But go in there and uh, let's get more members to the Man Cave. And what we're seeing there is a great evangelistic movement because what's happening is in the man cave, we challenge, equip, we mobilize, and then other men, the men that are there then, uh, they don't do the video chat like I do. They start their local man cave on the back porch of their house or at the local um, diner or whatever. And we, just men being real men, it's so hard sometimes to get men to Paradisus Deo's uh, That Man Is You program because you know what? It's at a church. So it's kind of a similar pro uh, concept to one person I know who has the, has the um, I guess it's Bible, brothers, and beer. You know, they get together at a local pub, talk about Jesus. And then there's the, the people that, the young adults that get together with the th theology on tap. I've gotten to speak to those groups at times. And this is it, is get real and, and be a man. Invite men to come over. <clears throat> and we have at our deepadventure.com website my seven virtue cigar samplers. It's so cool. They're premium cigars that I've chosen. They're made by Regina Cigars just for us. The four Madur medium blends are based on the four cardinal virtues, and the three Maduros are the theological virtues. And when you invite a friend over, have a shot of whiskey and a cigar, and you peel off that, that label, it has a challenge for them in the virtue that that cigar represents. So instead of talking about politics or sports, you're talking about it's a way to engage uh, each other in a real manly conversation. So Go to our website, deepadventure.com. There's so many cool things there. And we've got to tell you some good news. Long Ride Home Season 1, as you know, shows on EWTN every Tuesday night at 11 o'clock Eastern. Plus, it's been on the Armed Forces Network. But the new announcement is, I think, starting right about now, uh, it'll be available. It's going to be available on Amazon Prime and iTunes and hopefully other social, other uh, platforms like that again soon. But we've got to ask you, please go to our website, not our website, go to our YouTube channel, Bear Wozniak. YouTube has told us if we can add 1,000 new members, they'll do a lot more in promoting this radio show and, other, other, and, our, and our other things that we do to uh, the YouTube subscribers. So go to, and you can see Long Ride Home. You can see this interview with Sister Mary Jo. You can see uh, my morning ocean sunrise catechisms, catechisms that I do every morning and all kinds of other stuff. So it would really mean a lot to us if you go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Matt Meeks, who's our social media guy, is telling me, Got to get him to join that because a lot of good things are going to happen when we add a thousand more people. So we're back here. I, uh, I'm in I'm in Cocoa Beach. Two weeks ago, I was uh, with Sister Mary Jo at the Benedictine Monastery in the North Shore of Oahu. 
This is a Mary spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery. And Sister Mary Jo and the Benedictines mean so much to me. Sister Mary Jo was there with me, I think, within six months of my experience, the mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit and the charismatic renewal. I went and visited the monastery who, uh, who had impacted people who impacted my life. And there I found this beautiful, vivacious uh, woman, Sister Mary Jo, and Brother Michael, who now Father Michael, uh, at Pecos, New Mexico. A powerful experience there. And I could not believe that now the monastery sent them to Hawaii, probably just for me, and they planted a monastery there, I guess, almost 30 years ago. So we're going to dig into the message that Sister Mary Jo's life is. Sister Mary Jo, I love you so much. I'm glad you're on the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome. And so this was what, what year was it that you guys went to uh, Hawaii? 1984, 85? Father Michael came over in 1983 to see what kind of property or what he could find for the rest of us. Um, he, we were um, blessed at Pecos by Abbot David on September 8th, the birthday of Our Lady. And then on September 12th, the Holy Name of Mary, uh, he flew out to Oahu and Honolulu and began to look. And then on uh, December 8th, mind you, he um, was all Our Lady's days. He uh, signed the contract for the house that we would temporarily would be able to uh, be in five different bedrooms, five of us joining, coming over. So in 19, in February 1984, um, we all assembled at uh, Wainalaiki. That was our first uh, um, place of residence. And they continued to look for property. And in 1987, uh, day before um, Corpus Christi Sunday, uh, we were able to, it was June 12th, we were, they moved to um, our present location on the yes. North Shore. And they're Beautiful. up in the mountains, in a remote area yes. overlooking the ocean. It's really tough for me when I go there because I show up there for Mass, and I look down and I can see the surf breaking about three miles down the hill. At Waimea, which is about eight miles away, you can see it when it's big. Uh, but there's two, there's two things that are really noticeable when you come up into the property. First of all, you got to have the special secret password to get in. And then you drive about a mile along and you go up and you start getting greeted by, what are those weird birds called again? Peacocks. Peacocks. Like peacocks and peacocks. Hundreds of them. I don't know hundreds, but a lot of peacocks. We might even hear them yeah. while we're talking today, right? And the other thing that, not so much now, the, the dogs have gotten older, but the dogs used to always run out wagging their tails and greeting you when you came onto the property. It was so beautiful. My sister Mary Jo, though, the ministry of that of the monastery became really profound when you began to develop uh, the retreats, the basic Christian community retreats, and uh, really yeah. stirred up stirred up uh, a move of the Holy Spirit there in the island. Well, the Holy Spirit had was moving already on the islands uh, in prayer groups and all, but uh, this was just another aspect of uh, coming together and allowing the Lord to form a community. Uh, to go back into the parishes and work and be members of the parish witnesses to what the Lord had touched them on our particular weekend, basic Christian community of Hawaii. And it's a, a spirituality weekend, um, Catholic oriented. Some other uh, Christians come, which is no problem, but uh, we do focus on uh, the sacraments, on the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and our relationship with each of them, the sacraments, uh, Our Lady, um, all of that, and but what the Holy Spirit does is far beyond whatever we could do. We step back the team and we let the Holy Spirit lead the retreat in that sense because He knows each person who comes, He touches each heart according to where He knows they are to be touched, and that's beyond any knowledge that any human being would have. Only the Spirit knows us, and they are changed by the time Sunday comes, their life has taken on a whole different. Um, dimension. And you, you invite so, us into a life of faith. What, what is the life of faith? How do you challenge people, encourage people in their faith? What word would you have for, well, for our listeners? As you have said, it, you said it was a theological virtue, faith, hope, and, and love, faith, hope, and charity. But we, faith is that we believe in when we don't see what uh, is pronounced to us or um, given to us in Scripture, but we believe because it's being said and the Spirit anoints us to believe. But our faith has to become active. It's like a plant, seed. If you don't water it, it will not grow. But the more you use your faith, believing, even when you don't see, 
then you are more able to exercise and live your faith. Uh, whatever is coming along in your life, faith opens the door for you to believe that God is in charge. God is going to be able to do something with whatever that incident is and let God be God. I often say to the adults and the teenagers and young adults, God has been God for a really long time and he's really good at it. Why don't we let God be God? And that's true because we want to take over and we want to tell them how to do things. God knows what he's about. And we just let God be God. So, how do we learn to do that? Uh, how do we learn to let go? How, how do we get to that place? It's a challenge. It's a, we don't. We, it's an ongoing experience of letting go. Because as soon as we have let go with one thing, a new Yes. You know, we were talking with Sister Mary Jo. She's uh, someone that I love so much. Every time I see her, I know I'm going to be warmly welcomed by someone who loves me uh, just the way I am. She's so accepting of me. And she's seen me go through my, um, all the, so many of the scars of my life, uh, challenges, failings, and um, just an unconditional love and belief uh, uh, in, in, the, in my dignity and just, just always feeling so welcomed when we come to the monastery. We're talking with Sister Mary Jo. She, it's the Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery on the north shore of Oahu. People escape to Hawaii for a lot of reasons, maybe to go for lay in the sun or go surfing, but it might be a really good idea to escape to Hawaii just to go for on a private retreat uh, to the Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery on the North Shore. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. We're going to be talking more with about, about the life of faith with Sister Mary Jo. We want to invite you to go to our website, deepadventure.com. We got something. We got a lot of new stuff. I think by the time this show is aired, our new website is up, so we got a lot of new stuff going on there. But we really want to ask you, and this is what I know the monastery means for me, is please pray for us. We have a lot of just almost like insurmountable walls in front of us uh, tackling the, this, these things of doing these long, this TV series is daunting. And so we'd ask for your prayers. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. We want to remind you, not just is this radio show heard on all, I think, 500 terrestrial radio stations, but also it's heard on Sirius XM. I wish I could remember what, what channel. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com, to find out. Shortwave radio, we've got a lot of listeners, even in Belarus, Russia. And we're on every kind of iPad app you can imagine, I, iPod, every kind of podcast app you can imagine. We're on the EWTN app and also... Now we are showing, uh, we are recording this, and so it's on YouTube. So you can go to the Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, and you can see Sister Mary Jo and her big smile, and, uh, and, and you get more out of it when you watch the YouTube channel. So go to Bear Wozniak YouTube channel, and please subscribe because we're, we're, we're doing a little push right now to try to get 1,000 new subscribers. YouTube has told us when they do that, magic things are going to happen. So please go to YouTube and subscribe to Bear Wozniak. Sister Mary Jo, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Thank you. What, tell us what it means when, when I, our creed is the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wild adventure of God's will. Well, tell us about what that means, the adventure uh, of, uh, of our walk with the, with the Lord. What can it mean to us? Well, I think it, it has to come first from realizing that God loves us individually. God loves me. God loves you for who you are. You don't have to put on anything other than who you are at the moment because God continues to love. And then we respond to that love. We, we, we want to love God because he's already touched our lives with love. We've accepted. And then we return that love. So a daily walk with the Lord is a daily acceptance of his love for me and my love back to him until back and forth like a theophany. It's back and forth a song of love. And because it creates even more love within our hearts, our hearts begin to expand, it spills over into the lives of others. And that's the importance. But I cannot let God love me if I do not love me. And a lot of people do not love themselves. So that's one of my theme songs that I, I probably present to people more and more is, you must, you must ask God to give you the gift of love for yourself. He loves you. Why can't you love what he loves in you? 
love yourself. And so, then you can go love others. How do we learn to love ourselves? I know when I was young and went to the charismatic uh, Pecos Benedictine Monastery in Pecos, you would lead us through a healing of memory sometimes. And it was really powerful the first time I went through that. It caused me to be able to accept myself and love myself more. What kind of process is that? To dig us in a little bit deeper on uh, how we can learn to love ourselves and, and, uh, and forgive ourselves. And, uh, yes. Regardless uh, of what's happened in our lives. Yes. Regardless of what has happened in our lives, even in the womb, God was there. God knew us from the instant of our um, conception. He was there placing his image in us as we were being formed. And he, on the process, even in those nine months, things happen in a family. The baby uh, in the womb feels things and, and feels loved or feels rejected or mother and dad are at odds. So there's already a beginning of woundedness. And we're all wounded uh, because of our original sin and uh, our nature, our fallen nature. So God is, uh, I take people back to even forgiving their grandparents and great-grandparents for whatever is passed down in the family line, the family tree, because uh, DNA comes through all of those channels. And so um, we need to accept what is in our life and let God be God and take care of it because he loves us for who we are. And, um, and that, that's a priority in our lives, letting God love you. And if God loves you, who are we not to love what God loves? You know, when we're, when we're conceived, even if it's someone doesn't want us to be born, right? Someone says, oh, I wish that hadn't happened. Or even in the worst case, in the case of a rape, um, an accidental pregnancy or, or, or something like forced like that. It may have been in the worst of conditions, but... The infusion of the spiritual soul that God gives us is a divine act. It's something that he, that he does. And so you are not a mistake. And each person has this unique uh, spiritual, rational soul. And God gives them, gives them dignity because he gave them that soul. He made them. Saying God made us in his image is to say that we can have personal relationship with him. How do we, how do we move into personal relationship with Jesus? Well, it's like any relationship with anybody. You um, carry on a conversation. You tell God how you're doing. Uh, you ask God to uh, reveal himself to you. Probably more uh, often we should let God talk first and tell us about himself or tell us about what he sees in us on a given um, plan or a path that we're on. And then tell God what we're troubled with or what good things are happening. But it's, it's a back and forth, listening to God, talking to God, um, and allowing God to be the God that he is, the, the Jesus that he is, the Savior, the Spirit anointer, uh, friend, counselor, comforter that the Spirit is. It's all wrapped up. And, you know, baptism is a big open door for us as human beings because we, in, we don't are not worthy to have the Trinity within us, and yet God chooses to come within us, baptizing us in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And who are we to incorporate, to walk around with the Trinity within us? <laughs> that is such a, so awesome. And uh, I don't think we think about that very often or enough to realize who is within us, who is within our spirit, um, our body, in a sense, our, our whole being. And who? what is God doing as I walk down the street or as I'm driving or I'm walking to... Walmart, well, what is Jesus doing inside of me touching the lives of others? I don't know, but I know he must be doing something because he's within. I'm carrying him around. So it's an awareness of who we are. Joe, um, some people carry bitterness towards God in their heart. I, I remember uh, getting on my bicycle and pedaling from San Diego to California to Jacksonville, Florida. And it was really because I was in time in my life when I had a tremendous amount of pain, and I wanted my, my interior pain to kind of morph into a physical pain. And I remember pedaling over the coastal mountains of California, you know, San Diego, down into the desert, and it was record-breaking heat. It was the hottest ever, 119 degrees during the day, and even hotter. So I, I, the, the asphalt would stick to my tires, so I had to pull over and pedal at night. And I remember pedaling one night as I was just outside of, I just entered Arizona. 
and I was pedaling along the side road, looking at a beautiful, the beautiful stars uh, in the desert and the moon starting to rise. And I heard myself actually cry out to the Lord, I forgive you. You know, I would, had been holding a grudge against God. Uh, what would you say to people that are feeling that separation because they feel like God didn't live up to their expectations or they feel they got a bad deal? How do they, how do they, how, what would you say to them? Well, first of all, God is God and he knows all about us. He, you know, Ephesians 1 says, before the foundations of the earth are created, I already knew you by name. I already chose you. So God already knows who we are. And he knows what's good for us because he loves us. And he's not going to let anything happen in our life that he can't bring good out of it. And if God can't bring good out of it, it would never have happened. Or there's no God. As simple as that. So God brings good out of everything. I have to let God be the one because I know I have to come to a relationship of knowing he loves me. Not for anything I do or for anything I've said or done or whatever. He just loves me. And the song says, our Father doesn't love us for any good we've done. Our Father, he loves us because he sees in us his son. His son died for us. His son took everything on, uh, uh, from us that was on us, on himself, on the whole world, from the whole world, every human being. Jesus loves us. So how, why can't I then I move on and try to get rid of all the stuff in my life? Whatever it is, I don't have to keep scratching it to make it worse. Let go and let God be God. Give it over. When you realize you have a pain, a rejection, a disappointment, an abandonment, God was there. He was always there. God tells you. He, he breathes life in you. Let God show you who he is in that situation. This and voice, let him carry you. This voice of Sister Mary Joy, you're going to make me want to cry. This woman has meant so much in my life since the age of 19 when I first went to a retreat at the Pecos Benedictine Monastery. And Sister Mary Jo, I love you so much. And your voice uh, you. just kind of has stayed in my heart for many years. But, you know, we also, each of us have that same ability to, to have an effect on people's lives. You know, the only thing you get to take to heaven with you is other people. And, uh, and so we want to be able to be uh, abandoned enough in our love for God that we kind of almost become disinterested in our own agendas, and we just love. We just become love. Uh, but that takes sometimes breaking down, uh, uh, you know, the, the walk into the desert when you think you're going to the high places. And, uh, but eventually God's journey is to just dilate your heart, open you up uh, to, to, make, to be a bigger and bigger vessel for his love. We have one more segment with Sister Mary Jo. Uh, from the Mary Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery in, in uh, the North Shore of Oahu, uh, planted by her and five other, four others, along with Father Michael, who meant also so much to me. That tough, he's a tough guy, isn't he, Sister Mary Jo? Yeah, he's yeah, a tough guy, hurts. but you guys think he's cute. I just think he's tough and gritty. He's missing part of one finger. I go, oh, that's a real man when I met him. You know, I dug on that, that he's a <laughs> tough guy. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I want to give a shout out to my engineers. They know who they are. They don't like for me to say who they are, their names, or anything like that. They know who they are, and I want to thank them because we had a tough technical difficulty earlier today, and they just kept going forward. They kept pushing forward. They kept moving forward. They never gave up. It reminds me, uh, you know, I, I, Ephesians 6 says these three words, stand your ground, stand your ground. And then it talks about the, the shields. I was just looking at this this morning, the pic pictures of, 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 of our armor, of our, of our weaponry, you know, the, sh the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, the uh, sword of, uh, of truth. Uh, I forget all the others right now. But, but uh, God is challenging men to be men again. Uh, and you, can be, you can be a man. I don't challenge. I used to tell people, I used to tell men, we're, we're going to help you develop masculine spirituality, and I don't say that anymore. We're just, just going to help you become a man. Time for men to be real men again. And one of the men that meant so much to me in my life uh, is this Father Michael. who You know, Sister Mary Jo, they call it, they say he's cute. He's tough. 
he wears an old Green Bay Packers baseball cap all the time. And I remember when I went to the retreat in 1974, the Pecos Benedictine Monastery, and Sister Mary Jo was there, and Father Michael was there. He was the guy I had my individual session with. And I go in there, and he's missing one finger. I wonder what kind of fight he got in that caused that. He's tough and gritty. And it let me know that you can be a man. Uh, in fact, really, uh, the only real people that should give their lives to the Lord and should become Christians are people that have it in their, in their, in, in their heart to be uh, heroic because that's what the call is for each of us is to move in, live in heroic virtue. And so we have someone like that in my life. I have two wonderful people that mean so much to me, Sister Mary Joan, Father Michael. They're like navigational beacons in my life. And so Sister Mary Jo is here. I love you, Sister Mary Jo. Uh, what, what else is the Holy Spirit prompting in you? What else would you like to share with us? Well, one of the things that came with the charismatic renewal with me was um, the encouragement of others to live their faith, to be um, there um, for others, to not be, um, to be uh, excited about our excitement, enthusiastic. And that's so very important for us to be enthusiastic about our faith. If our faith is boring, then we're not letting the Holy Spirit enliven us because there's so much uh, life. There's no other life other than what God's life is that animates all other life. And if God is where he is in our life, then life just pours on and on. And, and so we want to encourage others and help them to be enthusiastic about living their faith and not drag along in that sense. I'm so... Um, I just find that that's so important. That, uh, well, you are that uh, person, of- too. You are that person. When, when I was up at the monastery last time, you said enthusiastic, and you said, you know what that means? And I did. Uh, what, what does the word entheos mean? What does it actually mean? Well, it is, in the Greek, enthu, thu is God, in God. So if I'm enthusiastic, then it's because I know the, the hinge of it. It's God. God is enthu in my life. He is in, I'm in God, and I am excited about it, and then I have to show it and, and witness to it. And uh, I think that's really important that we, and we urge others, we encourage others to move forward in their faith, not to drag. Uh, you're, you're, we're on a, in a race, kind of like Paul says, I'm, I'm running the race, and I, I'm not going to stop till I cross over and win the crown. So that's for us, too, but we can't just kind of... Um, drag along we we have to know how important each day is in our walk um and encouraging others to do that you know um, i know there's a gen- I know, go ahead sister mary joe go ahead well, he meets us he doesn't leave us he had we're guardian angels are always there to help us along that walk and if you don't know your guardian angel get a chance to start getting to know your guardian angel because that's 24 7 forever and ever and ask and that's for their an help exciting. and ask for their help you know, Sister Mary Jo, the, the, I love history, and I was reading about a general who was re- alive around the year 1400. He, he was scarred, just totally covered in scars, but only on his front. No scars on the back. And sometimes people make a statement, or someone made it to me the other day. I was talking to a really dynamic person who really loves the Lord, and he goes, yeah, I really came under spiritual attack, and I just wanted to basically cuss at him and say, no, you weren't. You weren't under spiritual attack. You were on the attack, and all you did was experience a little bit of resistance. When you're living a life in Theos in God and you're, you're praising the Lord, which is a great form of spiritual warfare, uh, you're going to encounter, you're, you're, it's going to reveal the enemy that's been, been there all along. And it's not that you're under attack. You're not under anything. You are a son of God. You're, 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 uh, you're God's servant. You're, you're, you're king. Your citizenship is in heaven. How can you say something like that? You're on the attack, and all you're doing is ex- experience a little bit of, a little bit, you're experiencing some spiritual resistance maybe from the enemy, but that just shows that maybe you're on the right track, that maybe you're standing up and, and being, as, as Paul said, stand your ground and take on the full, take on the full armor. So, uh, so can you talk to the people there right now who maybe have never had an encounter with the Lord? And uh, You know what? Um, before we do that, I want you to explain this. Jesus beats. Because I think that would be a beautiful way for people to uh, grow in their, in their communion with God. And then I'd like for you to talk just to those people out there who have not given their life to the Lord, who have wandered, and invite them back and pray for them to return to Jesus. Pray, give them a, pray with them. Well, Jesus beads are, uh, are beads of 100 of any dimension, color, or what, um, form. But 100 beads, 
and we pray the Jesus prayer on them. Uh, any cross will do or any medal, but the uh, hundred beads. And it's Lord Jesus Christ, God, uh, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And that's the um, um, Jesus prayer. And we pray it, but we can also shorten it. Jesus mercy, Lord Jesus mercy, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or just plain the beautiful name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And I, this is my favorite word, Jesus. I teach it every uh, time I can. Every, I give it to people when they come up for prayer. Cover yourself with the name of Jesus. His name means to heal and save. When you pray Jesus, you're asking for healing and saving, being saved from anything, or for another person in your family or another person that needs to be healed. Cover them with the name of Jesus. Because as scripture tells us, there's no other name under heaven by which we are saved. And this name of Jesus came to me from John 14, the Gospel of John 14, and is also mentioned in uh, John 15 and John 16. Ask and you shall receive. Seek, ask in the name of Jesus. Ask the Father in Jesus' name. And so I encourage everyone here listening to this, pray the name of Jesus in any situation, every situation, for yourself and for others. Clothe yourself with the name of Jesus. He heals and he saves, especially from the evil one. The evil one feel, hates you, the name of Jesus. When you're experiencing temptation, that's when people tend to hide from God. That's the moment to cry out, Jesus, and experience right. the grace of God. Now, for the, this, the, the Jesus prayer is Jesus, Lord Jesus. Well, my, my remembrance, the way I, I remember being taught is Jesus, Lord Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. This is what I, re yeah. I remember. I may be wrong from when I, my first days at the monastery oh. in 1974. Right. But my prayer, I just say, Jesus, Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. but Jesus, Lord Jesus, yeah. have mercy on me, a sinner. Can you talk to those people right now that really are hearing this and go, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to I want to experience intimacy with God, maybe even for the first time, or I want to return to the Lord. Can you speak to their hearts and then lead them in prayer? One way, I guess, if you know that something is missing in your life, you're finding all kinds of things to fill up that uh, space, and it's not working, you're, come to Jesus. Jesus is the one who will fill up every need that you have. There is no other way in which we can become who we are called to be day by day than walking with Jesus in the Holy Spirit. And so um, you, when you find yourself needing something, just say, Jesus, come. Just his name. Jesus, I need you. Um, invite him in uh, if you haven't had that experience already. Jesus, uh, I love you, but I don't love you as I should love you. I don't love myself as I should love myself with your love. In the name of Jesus, the Father, God the Father sent us Jesus. Jesus lived up to his name. I heard at Pecos one time of Jesus saying to my heart, is there any time I have not lived up to my name? So oh. if you are feeling a blank in your life, a, a, a void, just begin to pray Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus, Lord Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I Jesus. give you my Come life. And, yes, Come Lord, on. I give you my life. Now fill my so Lord heart. Jesus, we we just ask now to come to everyone who will be listening when any time that they are listening. You so love them, Lord, and you want them to open up and let your love invade them and envelop them to surround them. Your love is salvation. It's power. It is the anointing to live the life that we're called to live as a, a son and a daughter of the Most High God. And so, Lord, we are so privileged that you would even choose any of us to welcome you and to walk with you. Who are we? We're nothing. But yet you have seen something in us so marvelous because on the cross you paid the price for our salvation. So you see in us sanctity, holiness. Help us, Lord, to become more and more who you're calling us to be each day. With the trials and with the ups and downs of life, whatever it is that's there, it's always good for us to keep moving on that you pull us through because you know what you're doing, Lord. I trust you how important that is. Jesus, I trust you. Jesus, I trust you. We have to go, you guys. We've been talking with Sister Mary Jo from Mary's Spouse of the Holy Spirit Monastery. I know you guys are going to want us to have her back on. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You can go to our website, deepadventure.com. Uh, we got to go. And as we say in Hawaii, Sister Mary Jo, you want to say it with me? Can we say aloha to everybody? Aloha. aloha.
Amen. I will be back next week. Thank you, sister. Love you very, very much. You're so precious to me. Thank you.